Hello everyone and welcome to this Exoplan session for insights. For our case today, which is an endangerous upper jaw case, I will place two implants using the dual scan protocol and thereafter design a surgical guide. In the Exoplan DB, I have defined tooth 1-3 and 2-3 as work type implant planning and I have selected implant type, abutment or screw retain decide later. Since I'll use the dual scan protocol, I have a CBCT scan of the patient wearing a prosthesis with radiopoc markers and a CBCT scan of the prosthesis alone. Okay, now I'll start the implant planning. First, the software asks me to load the CT scan of the patient. When I've done this, the software automatically continues to the next step where I can define density references for soft tissue, bone and enamel, as well as set a threshold for denser parts to be shown in blue color. Since Exoplan saves the values I used last time in the software, I don't need to change anything if I don't want to. When the values are defined, the software automatically continues to the next step, which is the panoramic curve definition. Exoplan now automatically defines a curve, and as you can see, when I scroll through the slices, it finds the best curve in the current slice. If the software does not find a nice curve due to lack of data or so, it presents a default curve. Of course, I can change the curve by moving or adding points as usual. I'll change the noise threshold a little bit and continue with next. In this next step, I can choose which type of CT alignment workflow I want to use. Since I have two CT scans, I select the CT to CT alignment. Now the software asks me to load the CT scan of the prosthesis. I use the slider to set the surface threshold so that the image of the prosthesis looks like the real prosthesis. Then I extract the mesh. Now the software automatically aligns the patient's CT and the prosthesis using the radio park markers. I use the secondary views to check the alignment, checking that the markers in both the patient scan and the prosthesis are corresponding. This is a good match, but if I'm unsatisfied with the automatic alignment, I can switch to manual alignment and move the prosthesis to the right position. However, I'm happy with this automatic alignment, so I will click Acceptable Alignment and the software continues to the next step. Now we are in the implant positioning step, but before we continue to the implant placement, I will show you a new feature we have for maxillary cases. With this new feature, you can mark the sinuses. This step comes automatically in the wizard workflow if you are working in the area of the posterior teeth. Since I work on the canines here, I will switch to expert mode and start it from there, just to show you this new feature, which is called sinus segmentation. I use the secondary view axial to locate the sinus area and I click on one of the sinuses. I use the slider to mark the area orange and I start the segmentation. 
I check the result and if I'm happy with it, I can create a mesh that will react as a collision object if I come too close to it with an implant during the implant placement. I'll create a mesh for the second sinus as well. I start the wizard and we are in the implant positioning step again. I will place a fully guided implant and I start by placing the implant for tooth 1-3. I focus the secondary views to this area by clicking on the tooth in the prosthesis in the 3D view and I place the implant roughly in the secondary view curve cut. As soon as I place the implant, the implant focused views, implant cross and implant axial are activated. I correct the placement a bit and then I look at the position in relation to the prosthesis and I adjust the position using the arrows in the 3D view. Of course, I must have to check the position in relation to the bone as well, so I enlarge the implant cross view to see better. I select the longer implant by dragging this arrow. This can of course also be done by selecting a longer implant under the tab Select in the wizard window. Here you can see the sinus mesh I created earlier, and as you can see, it reacts as a collision object and alerts me if I come too close with the implant. I'm scrolling the view around the implant by holding the right mouse button down and moving the mouse to check the situation around the implant. Since I'm not a dentist, but a dental technician, the implant placement must be checked by the doctor before the planning is finalized. When I'm happy with the implant placement, I move on to place the implant for tooth 2-3. Two, When the implants are placed, I continue with next, and in this step, I can place anchor pins. These are used to keep the surgical guide in place, since we do not have any teeth support when working with an endentulous case. I can select, uh, an, I can select an anchor pin from the drop-down menu, and place it roughly in the 3D view. Then I have a secondary view, in which I can also adjust the placement of the anchor pin using the arrows, both in the secondary view and in the 3D view. I scroll around to check that it's placed uh, correctly. I will place two anchor pins for this case. 
As you can see, if I come too close to an implant, I'm alerted. Important to remember is that the patient has cheeks, so you can't place the anchor pins too distal. I move on with next, and it is time for the sleeve placement. Since I placed implants for which there are compatible sleeves for a fully guided workflow, these sleeves are automatically placed. This guided system offers three defined heights for the sleeves and I will select the highest position to make sure the sleeves are not touching the gingiva. After the sleeve position is finished, it's time to approve the planning. As I said before, this must be done by the doctor, but for now I will do it myself. If this was a real situation, I would at this point save a scene and send it to the doctor. They would then open the scene, make the needed adjustments, approve the planning and send it back to me so that I can design the surgical guide. I will now start the surgical guide design workflow. The first step is to design the sleeve mounts. That is the material holding the sleeves. I will make the mounts a bit longer to have a nice transition between the mounts and the rest of the guide. If I'd like, I can also add markers to the sleeve mount, which are corresponding to the implant connection interface. In the next step, I mark the areas on the prosthesis that I want to use when designing the surgical bottom. Now I set the insertion direction for the guide. In a case like this, I do not want to block out any undercuts to make sure that the guide will have a lot of contact with the gingiva.
Then I draw the line to define the surgical guide top. In this step, I can also decide the thickness of the overall guide material. In the next step, I can add windows and support material if I'd like, but for this type of guide, I will only add a text. The software takes the patient name automatically, but I can of course change that if I want to. We also have a new feature in this step. You can easily add a connector between two sleeve mounts if you'd like. I will delete this one since it's not necessary for this design. Now the guide is merged, and I can do some freeforming if I'd like. This design doesn't need any freeforming though, so I'll continue and the surgical guide protocol is written. Let's have a quick look at the protocol.